next property which is the fifth property if s be the focus if s be the focus of the parabola and tangent and normal at any point p meet its axis in t and g respectively okay so tangent meets at t normal meets at g okay then then st is equal to sg is equal to sp let's prove it it's very very simple you just have to make a proper diagram and write the equation of tangents and normal and see where they are meeting the axis of the parabola so tangent and normal they meet at t and g and this is your s and this is your p so we have already seen st is a plus at square and sp is also a plus at square that's the focal distance now what is sg so we know the equation of the tan uh, normal is y equal to minus tx plus at plus at cube put y as 0 so tx will become this so x will become 2a plus at square correct and this is already a so this distance has to be a plus at square again which clearly implies st is equal to sg is equal to sp okay that means with s as the center and st sg and sp as the radius we can actually draw a circle like this very bad circle but this is a circle okay and this is going to be 90 degrees over here so s is going to be the midpoint of s is going to be the midpoint of t and g is the midpoint of t and g next is the sixth property guys so let's note this down also six property says if s be the focus if s be the focus and sh be perpendicular perpendicular to the tangent at p then sh square is os into sp sh square is os into sp so let's say this is a tangent at a point p and this is your s this is your o so you have to prove that sh square is os into sp so i'll give you one minute please type done on the chat box if you are done with it if done please type done on your ch chat box if you are done with it done so guys pretty simple p is uh, let's say at square comma 280 
and tangent will be T y equal to x plus a t square. Let's find the coordinates of h. So where it meets h, x will be zero. So put this as zero. So T y is equal to zero plus a t square. So y is equal to a t. So this point will be zero comma a t. And a will be a comma zero. Sorry, s will be a comma zero. So s x square is nothing but a minus zero square, a t minus zero square, which is actually a square plus a square t square. O s is nothing but a. S p is nothing but a plus a t square. So you can clearly see that when you multiply O s with S p, you get a into a plus a t square. Which is nothing but a square plus a square t square, which matches with this result. Done. So, guys, here we come to the end of this chapter. Now we'll solve some problems on it because I don't want to start with ellipse right now. So next class we'll be starting with an ellipse, but uh, presently we'll take some problems. So let's start with this question, very basic ones, the ones which are based on the locus definition of a parabola. Find the equation. Find the equation of the parabola. whose focus is minus 6 comma minus 6 and vertex is minus 2 comma minus 2. So if you make a diagram for this, let's say, uh, minus 2 comma minus 2 is your vertex minus 6 minus 6 is your focus okay so we know the line connecting the vertex and the focus is the axis correct so this will be your axis of the parabola and also we know that directrix will be a line perpendicular to the axis and it will meet axis at such a point which will be exactly in such a way that v is the midpoint of v is the midpoint of s and n so these two distances will be equal so it's very simple to find the equation of this line this line equation is y equal to x Correct. <clears throat> right. So the equation of the directrix would be y equal to minus x plus some lambda. Correct. Now to get this lambda, I need to know this point. Let's say this point is uh, a comma, b, uh, let's say alpha comma beta. So alpha minus 6 by 2 is minus 2 and beta minus 6 by 2 is minus 2 again that means alpha is going to be minus 4 plus 6 which is going to be 2 so beta is also going to be 2 so put alpha beta in place of x and y to get the value of lambda so 2 is equal to minus 2 plus lambda so lambda is equal to 4 Correct. So we get the equation of the directrix as x plus y equal to 4. Now, once the equation of the directrix is known and equation of the uh, and the position of the focus is known, we can easily write the equation of the parabola. Right. So let's clear this up. So x plus 6 the whole square, y plus 6 the whole square under root is equal to distance of any point 
from this line by root 2. Okay. So square both the sides and multiply with 2, you will get this equation. Okay. And if you simplify this, you are going to get x square plus y square minus 2xy. plus 32x plus 32y plus 144 minus 16 128 equal to 0 this becomes your answer yeah okay let's take up next question now from a point a Common tangents are drawn to the circle x square plus y square is equal to a square by 2 and the parabola y square is equal to 4x find the area of the quadrilateral find the area of the quadrilateral formed by the Common tangents the chords of contact of the point A with respect to the circle and the parabola. So read the question very very carefully. From a point A, common tangents are drawn to the circle and the parabola. Find the area of the quadrilateral formed by the common tangents, the chord of contact of the point A with respect to the circle and the parabola. So this is the situation actually. So this is your... Uh, circle also and there is a point A through which you are drawing common tangents to these two okay so this is a common tangent okay so now let's say this is the point of contact this is a point of contact here and you are connecting these by straight lines and making a quadrilateral from there. So the quadrilateral is P, Q, R, S. This is your point A. And you have been asked to find out this area. Any idea anybody? Okay, so let's discuss this without wasting much time. So, uh, first of all, let's say I take this point Q to be 80 square comma 280. Okay. And I write the equation of the tangent drawn at Q. That will be Ty is equal to x plus 80 square. Correct. Okay. Now this tangent is also a tangent to this circle. Correct. That means the distance of origin from this tangent should be equal to the radius. Correct. 
So let me write it in the generalized form. So distance from the origin will be mod a t square by under root of 1 plus t square. And this should be equal to the radius. Radius is, radius is a by root 2. Correct? Radius is a by root 2. So if you uh, cancel out the factor of a and square both the sides, you will get 2 t to the power 4 is equal to 1 plus t square. Okay? So just square both the sides, cancel out a squares, you will get this. Now clearly a root here is t is equal to plus minus 1. Right. That means I can say P point could be either be A comma 2A or A comma minus 2A. Correct. That means it has to pass through the focus itself. Right. And clearly it's the lattice rectum. So QR has to be the lattice rectum. Right. Now, I want to see what is P and S. What is P and S from this diagram? What will be these two points? Okay. So, when you put now the value of T as 1, let's say I take uh, T as 1 over here. So, I get Y is equal to X plus A. Okay. And let's say consider this point to be x1 comma y1 correct so the equation of the tangent to the circle to the circle at x1 comma y1 is nothing but x x1 plus y y1 equal to a square by 2 okay and I try to compare this equation with this. So basically, I'm trying to compare these two equations. So this equation and this equation, I'm trying to compare. Okay. So when I do that, I get, I get x1 by 1 is equal to y1 by minus 1 is equal to a square by minus 2a that means x1 is minus a by 2 and y1 is a by 2 okay so it's very clear that this point p has now coordinates minus a by 2 comma a by 2 okay and similarly, I can say S will have coordinates of minus A by 2, minus A by 2. Okay. Because they would be symmetrically located. They would be symmetrically located about the X axis. So this has to be your X axis. The line connecting A to M has to be your X axis. Okay, so PS will be nothing but the distance between P and S, which is going to be A. Okay, moreover, moreover, we can say that PS will be parallel to QR. Both will be parallel to the Y axis. Correct. So indirectly, your quadrilateral PQRS is basically a is basically a trapezium. Okay, PQRS is basically a trapezium. Correct. Now, what's the area of the trapezium? area of the trapezium will be half of sum of parallel sides. So sum of PQ plus RS into the distance between them. Okay. 
So please note that this distance will be 3a by 2. So it becomes half of 4a plus a into 3a by 2, which will become which will become one fourth of 15a square. So answer is 15 by 4a. Any questions with respect to this solution? Rohan, Atmesh. So we'll take one more question before we end this session. If TP and TQ are any two tangents, are any two tangents to a parabola and the tangent at a third point R and the tangent at a third point R cuts them in P dash and Q dash. Then prove that TP dash by TP plus TQ dash by TQ is going to be 1. So we have a tangent like this. We have a tangent like this and we have a tangent like this. Let's see. Okay. So let's say this is T P Q P dash Q dash. This is R. Okay, so let's let's try to solve this question. So let's say point uh, P is corresponding to a parameter T1, point Q is corresponding to a parameter T2, and point R is corresponding to a parameter T3. Okay. Now, uh, we know that the tangents at the tangents drawn at P and Q will meet at A T1 T2 comma A T1 plus T2. Correct. Right. So let's say this point is a t1 square comma 2 a t1 and let's say this is t p dash is to t p is let's say lambda is to 1. Okay, let's say it is lambda is to 1. And by the way, this point is going to be the meeting point of tangent at P and tangent at R, which is going to be a T1 T3 comma a T1 plus T3. Okay. So now TP dash by TP is going to be the distance between these two points divided by the distance between these two points. Okay, which I'm calling as lambda is to one. So let's find out the ratio of the distance between these two points. So TP dash will be a T1 T3 minus a T1 T2 whole square 
माइनस ए टी वन प्लस टी थ्री माइनस टी वन माइनस टी टू होल स्क्वेर अंडर रूट ओके विच इज गोइंग टू बी ए टेक टी वन ए स्क्वेर टी वन स्क्वेर कॉमन टी थ्री माइनस टी टू होल स्क्वेर प्लस ए स्क्वेर T3 थ्री माइनस टी टू होल स्क्वेर अंडर रूट विच इज गोइंग टू बी ए टी थ्री माइनस टी टू अंडर रूट ऑफ टी वन स्क्वेर प्लस वन ओके इन अ सिमिलर वे इफ आई फाइंड टी पी इफ आई फाइंड टी पी What will I get? Under root of a t one square minus a t one t two whole square plus two a t one minus a t one plus t two whole square. And again, if I am not wrong, that will give me. ए टी वन माइनस टी टू अंडर रूट ऑफ टी वन स्क्वेर प्लस वन करेक्ट सो दिस रेशियो विल बी सो दिस रेशियो विल बी टी पी डैश बाय टी पी विल बी एक्चुअली टी थ्री माइनस टी टू बाय टी वन माइनस टी टू कैन आई से सिमिलरली Similarly, TQ dash by TQ would be T1 minus T3 by T1 minus T2. Correct. Now let's add them. Let's add them. So TP dash by TP plus TQ dash by TQ. Will be T3 minus T2 by T1 minus T2 plus T1 minus T3 by T1 minus T2. You can take T1 minus T2 as common. You'll have T3 minus T2 plus T1 minus T3. T3 and T3 gets cancelled, and you are left with T1 minus T2 by T1 minus T2, which becomes one and hence proved. Okay, so quite a hectic problem, but if you know the road map, you'll be able to easily navigate through this problem. Okay, so guys, with this we come to the end of your uh, parabola chapter. We are left with ellipse and hyperbola. So next class also we'll keep it online, and I'll start with the ellipse. Okay. Best of luck for your coming exams. So over and out from Centum Academy. Thank you for coming online.